Welcome to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping Orange County. With your host, Don Camber. Hello, live from the OC Talk Radio studios at UCI's Beale Applied Innovation Center. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber with another great guest impacting our community in a positive way. Today, I welcome Pacific Marine Mammal Center Chief Executive Officer Glenn Gray. He oversees the center in Laguna Beach that rescues, rehabilitates, and releases sea lions and seals and inspires ocean stewardship through research and education. Thank you, Glenn, for being on Impact OC. Thank you, Don. Appreciate it. Glenn, please give us a verbal tour of your center on Laguna Canyon Road that's near the Laguna Beach Animal Shelter and Dog Park. Okay. Well, like you said, we are involved in the rescue and rehabilitation and then ultimately the release of seals and sea lions. And that's what we've done very successfully for 51 years. Um, But over the last couple of decades, we really expanded on that to add an education pillar using what we've learned from the treatment of the patients. And then more recently, I'd say within the last five years, we've expanded on the the medical and the science side of things to actually become a veterinary research hospital. I'd like you to expand on that aspect of it. Yeah. Well, I'd like to say that we've gone from just treating the symptoms that our patients come in with to learning from what ails them to then figure out, well, how do we address the causes of those symptoms and then ultimately the next goal is to find the cure for those causes so to get to from the symptoms to the the causes is a lot of medical research and and it really revolves around our staff we considerably upgraded our staff over the last five years our head veterinarian uh, is not only very uh, renowned in marine medicine but she also holds a phd that uh, the a matter of her study was uh, cancer in sea lions. So we do a lot of research. It, you know, Sadly, not every one of our patients lives, but even those who pass, uh, they contribute in terms of a necropsy. We do tissue and blood samples. Um, we have freezers full of these uh, samples that we do research on, and then other organizations call us and, and ask if we have samples that we can share with them that they do then do uh, research on. Explain how you rescue the sea lions and then you release them when they're well. Okay. And, and we want to point out, when you say patients, you are talking about the, the animals that you rescue. Yeah, I do refer to them as patients because we are a hospital. The rescue is a little tricky, depending on their condition. Normally, we get a call from someone at the beach. It could be just a passerby or it could be a lifeguard. Uh, we send out a rescue team. Uh, we have a truck that is ready to go with the uh, nets and large crates. Imagine a very large dog crate, if you will. The rescue team is trained. They go out. They make sure that we're able to rescue them, that they're not in a dangerous position. And they, Sometimes they're on a rocky shoreline. Anyway, they're trained to keep the animal calm. They put a net around it, pull it in, get it into the crate, get the crate back into the truck and back to the center. And then it's like checking into a hospital. We weigh them because we want to know how much they weigh on the way in. And then we do a diagnosis on it, diagnosis on them. We figure out what ails them. Is it malnutrition, which is most of the time, but it could be something else. It could be a, an entanglement from a fish line, or it could be a poison. It could be eating plastics, any number of things. And we figure out what the problem is and then what's the diagnosis and the treatment. And where do you find these sea lions that need rescues? Well, our charter in life is Orange County. So we're responsible for taking care of the 52-mile coastline from Seal Beach to San Onofre. And we're a stranding organization. There are similar stranding organizations up and down the coast of California, each responsible for roughly a county. So generally, where are you rescuing them from? (laughs) I've looked at the stats, and for us within Orange County, the majority of our rescues occur in Huntington Beach, uh, Newport Beach, and Dana Point. Um, I think Dana Point, obviously, because of the harbor. Um, The other areas, as opposed to why aren't they in Laguna Beach, I I can't say specifically, except that it's probably closer to their colonies. And what is the general cause that causes you to rescue them? The majority, uh, at least historically, have been um, coming in from malnutrition. The seals and sea lions are pretty much born the same month, almost within the same week of every year, mid-July. 
think about six months after that, the pups are weaned from mom. Mom may have to go further offshore to hunt for food, come back, the pup is wandering off, uh, gets lost, and so they haven't learned to feed for themselves yet, um, they strand. So that's probably the number one cause. And the majority of the patients that we have when we're rescuing them in, in say, January, February, they are those six, seven-month-old pups. There's a real seasonality to, to the intake of our patients. So we start taking in a lot in January when the pups are weaning off of mom. We get them healthy again, and then we release them. So right now, uh, we're at our low point. We only have six patients in right now. But we could peak in, say, April, May, June to over 100. Yeah, you're nursing them back to health, but if they're pups, how are they going to know to fend for themselves when you release them? Yeah, but that's how we train them. We have a series of pools, and if you, it's really fun to watch them progress to what we call the pre-release pool. So at first, we may be hand-feeding them. Well, actually, we might be making them a fish smoothie because they're not ready to eat full fish yet. Then we give them dead fish, and then we give them live fish. And then ultimately, they're in a pool with other seals, and we give them live fish that are swimming so they know exactly how they have to hunt when they re-enter nature. Explain the training. What does the person look like that is training them? <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like training, like, like we're, we're trying to make them jump through uh, you know, hoops or anything. Right. It's really medical training. Uh, we run a real hospital. Uh, if you came through and did you know, the, the morning rounds, you would think you're in a, a human hospital. It's that specific. We rely a great deal on volunteers. Uh, we have over 200 volunteers, and the volunteers that assist in our animal care are, are amazing people that have put in many years and a lot of training uh, on site. But that's augmented by a professional staff of marine veterinarians and interns and fellows. So there's a lot of supervision uh, by trained uh, professionals. So exactly how do they interact with the sea lions? I guess there's a protocol that they have to do in order to train the sea lion so that when the sea lion is released, the sea lion knows what to do. Yeah, I'd say the, the, the interaction is, is it's, it's tricky because they're so darn cute and, and you'd love to go, oh, look at little sweet pea. But you can't do that. You can't treat them like puppies uh, because you don't want them to get habituated to humans. So we purposely have to keep our distance. We have uh, boards that we place between them and us when we're moving them, say, from an indoor pen to the outdoor pool. Um, that's really for their safety as well as the, 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 our employee or our volunteer because as good as they can be, they can be snappy and ornery. <laughs> so when you rescue them, does that mean they're also going to be part of research so that scientists and everybody can learn from them? Well, we make our research available, certainly. Um, we don't have to do tissue samples on, on all of our patients, but some uh, come in with some very serious illnesses that we have to research. Um, it, 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 we've had some recently with cancer. Some have uh, made it and some haven't, and in each case we try to, to do that research. We ourselves are doing research. We collaborate with other, other agencies. We publish as well as we share our data. Is it possible to learn from them to help humans? Well, we certainly hope so. There, uh, that is actually one of the areas of study by uh, Dr. Deming was um, cancer in sea lions. And as I understand in talking with her, there's a very high correlation between cancer in sea lions and humans. So we're hopeful that some of the research that we're doing today on marine mammals is, uh, will be translated to research for humans as well. And we want to point out, the center is open to the public. Please explain the hours. Yeah, we're uh, 10 to 4 every day, uh, absent Christmas. Um, so it is free. Uh, we're entirely supported by donations. Um, it's a pretty interesting tour. We have docents there in the visitor yard that will um, uh, give their, our visitors a very good overview, answer all the questions they have. And then for folks who would prefer to have a more in-depth tour if uh, they're so kind enough to make a donation we can arrange a behind the scenes uh, tour as well where they can actually be in the hospital for a brief period of time. Uh, the other thing I'd like to just mention is all the educational platforms that we have. So absent coming in and just visiting we have programs that are especially fun during the summer because uh, we have kids coming in for a whole you know Monday through Friday workshop but then during the school year too we have uh, kids coming in after hours or on the weekends or kind of a joint 
uh, curriculum where they'll start the curriculum in their school classroom and then take a bus and come in and visit us in you know the latter part of the week or in the afternoon. What are some of the activities they do? Oh, gosh, we have over, what, 15 uh, different programs, but Camp Pinniped <laughs> is, is a fun one during the summer where we really teach them a lot about marine science, and they get a chance to actually go through you know, our facility, see the, the uh, patients in their various degrees of acuity from you know, serious to almost being released. Uh, they learn a lot about uh, ocean pollution, ocean stewardship, um, single-use plastics, you know, all the things that uh, humans are doing, unfortunately, to our ocean. Explain what they're doing to the ocean that hurts them. Yeah, well... Single-use plastics is a, is a pretty popular topic now, and, and it is one of the topics for our educational classes, too. And, you know, I'll use this as an opportunity to tell you that how we think we're effective is if we can teach the kids, and the kids go home, and they'll tell their siblings, or more importantly, their parents, that maybe you don't need that extra straw, or maybe you don't need to take that plastic bag, you know, from the grocery store. You know, let's recycle. Because all those plastics get broken down into smaller and smaller plastics, this called microplastics. The fish eat them. The seals eat the fish. Actually, humans are digesting it through what we eat from the sea. There's research out now that says that most humans consume the equivalent of about five grams of microplastics in a week, which is about the equivalent of a credit card. How are you funded? Entirely through donations. Uh, and Well, I'll say not entirely. A few grants, but very few. Uh, we do get grants from some government agencies that uh, are supporting our research. But by and large, it's uh, donations from individuals, families, family foundations, uh, some corporate foundations as well. What about volunteers? What are the requirements to be a volunteer? <laughs> time and patience. <laughs> uh, time is the biggest one. Uh, we have over 200 volunteers. Um, I mentioned the docents that work in the visitor yard. Uh, we have those that support our educational programs and those that support our animal care in the hospital. So we try to match up those roles with what the volunteer wants to do. We do provide training, a lot of education. We have online courses that uh, if someone wants to come in and just kind of get started, they might start in the visitor yard. And, and we have had people that stay there for 20 years. That's just what they love. They love the interaction with our visitors. But some want to do something different or something more, so they'll take more of the classes that we offer. And then they may progress through educational programs and perhaps into uh, animal care. But to, to answer your, your question more specifically, it's really time and patience. So if we're going to put a lot of time and effort into our volunteers, we also want them to make a commitment back to us that they can keep somewhat to a schedule. Because, we, for example, we are running a hospital and we have shifts. So if you're signed up to be there on Wednesday afternoon, we really you know, depend on you being there. So it's really a commitment of time and dedication like that. What are the kind of positions volunteers really prize to get? <laughs> I think it depends on who you ask. Because <laughs> in each case, they, you know, there's people that have done the visitor yard and love it and don't want to do anything else, and those that do animal care and don't want to do anything else. Um, it just really kind of depends on you know what what their interest is. We get retired teachers that absolutely love helping out with our educational programs. We have some uh, retired um, um, medical personnel that love being, you know, in the uh, in the hospital. Uh, just we, the good thing is we have enough aspects of what we do that we can kind of satisfy what most people want. And we have a new one coming up next year because we're building a uh, water reclamation facility. And so that's going to be sort of the fourth pillar of uh, our education is talking about water recycling. We talk about it a little bit. We have a watershed program where we uh, inform our, our students about how pollution runs off uh, and affects the ocean. But um, we'll be able to show them even more hands-on through this water reclamation facility how important it is to recycle water. We'll be recycling up to 90% of the water that we use. For the animals. Mm -hmm. Yes. What have you learned from the animals? <laughs> That's a funny question. If I may, you know, I retired from a completely different profession, and I, was, I, I tried retirement for a couple of years, and it was pretty boring. And when I came back and accepted this position, my, my wife likes to say, you come home so happy. And I am. I, I really am. Because I think about, think about this place I go. Everybody who's there, the employees, volunteers, visitors, the patients, they all want to be there. Um, so I think what I've learned is, is to be happy again. 
That's sweet. Yeah. Now, what's the reaction you see when the kids see them for the first time? <laughs> That's really fun because my office is on the second floor where the education program is, and uh, we don't keep our doors closed too much. So I see these kids coming in you know, all the time. And it's kind of funny. They kind of poke their heads in and say hi. And, and I can listen to the class, and you can just tell the excitement because the volume starts to rise, and they get more excited, more excited, more excited. And it's kind of funny because during the summer, the, the teachers have a uh, saying that was it uh, shark bait. They, they yell out shark bait, and then the kids get quiet again. You know, <laughs> And then they get excited, and it gets really loud again. They go, shark bait, and then the kids get quiet again. It's just fun to watch them. You know? and, and I poke my head out and I watch them from the back of the class, and it's, it's fun to see them interact. Because most of these kids don't know each other. You know? Right. But don't you believe that you're inspiring future scientists? We hope so. We actually know that we do have that effect on kids. Um, we get a lot of reviews from the parents as well. And uh, we, we actually have a, a lady that uh, works for us full time now that came through as a, as a young girl attending some classes and then volunteered. And it was inspirational. She changed her uh, uh, education to marine science and now she works for us. So this makes it interesting for their educational system. Rather than just reading it from a book, they get to actually see the animals mm -hmm. and how they maneuver, which I'm sure they mm -hmm. just love. Oh, and real hands-on. I mean, there's a class where um, they need to dissect a fish. <laughs> I looked at your expression there. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I thought, too, when I first heard about okay. it. But, um, but they love it. You know, they really get into it. What's the difference between a sea lion and a seal? Ear flaps. Say that again? <laughs> I call them ear flaps. Um, like ears. A yeah. sea lion has, a, has exterior ears, and a seal doesn't. That's the difference. That's the primary difference. And is it easy to confuse the two? Mm, no, not really. I mean, you can see the ears. And then, then there's other species, which it gets a little trickier, but for the most part, you can tell by their exterior if they have a heavy fur. Like right now, we have this beautiful little northern fur seal uh, in as one of our patients. It's kind of unusual because they don't normally travel this far south. But she's very noticeable, very different because she has very thick fur and she's always grooming herself, so she's always spinning around in the water and brushing herself. What did you name that one? That one's Sweet Pea. Sweet I think, Pea. I think she's appropriately named. And how long will these sea lions or seals stay at the hospital? It depends on what the issue is that we're dealing with, uh, but the short answer is probably around four months or so. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we weighed them on the way in. We know what their you know, accurate weight should be to be released. So we keep them there until we get them to that weight. Maybe we put a couple extra pounds on them just to give them a little buffer because you know they do have to reacclimate to nature and learn to, to hunt in, in the real world again. We monitor them. We weigh them frequently. And like I said, around four months or so, uh, that's when we release them. What do you hope visitors will get out of going to the center? Well, aside from just the, the high cuteness factor, which is a lot of fun, um, and I love to see when the kids light up. And, and uh, we, we just had a young boy come through this weekend, and he's three, and he's trying to learn to swim. And when he saw the seals, he goes, I want to I swim like those guys. I want to learn to do that. So it's just variety of reactions. You get you know things like that. You get comments like, gee, I want to study this. Or maybe it's just something simple like, you know, I don't need that straw. You know, I, I don't need those plastics. I'm, I'm going to be more conscious of what the ocean is. Do you see the center expanding even more? We would like to. Well, on one hand, I wish we could work ourselves out of a job. But, you know, unfortunately, human behavior is not going to allow that to happen because there's just too many things happening in the ocean that uh, are caused by humans. But um, to more directly answer your question about getting larger, we are. We're doing an expansion, a physical expansion. We break ground in um, the first quarter of next year. We're going to uh, about double the size of our education center and uh, almost uh, another third larger on the hospital. Uh, we'll have a dedicated uh, operations room, uh, operating room, I should say, and uh, a necropsy room. Um, that's going to allow us to bring in more interns and fellowships and for our teaching hospital. We're also going to increase the uh, capacity of our pools. We have seven pools currently. We'll, we'll soon have ten. And then the water reclamation facility on top of that to recycle the water. The water. What's the temperature of the water in these pools? Pretty much what you would find in the ocean naturally, although there are times when we warm it up because some of these creatures do like it a little bit warmer when they're rehabilitating. How do you know? 
Uh, you can tell by their behavior. Um, we also have a couple of um, you know patient rooms, if you would want to call them that, where the floors are heated. Um, so if they've come in and they're really malnutritious and they, and they need uh, uh, longer recovery, we'll put them in one of those rooms where the, they have a warmer floor. Wow. So you really see this expanding and just being an incredible research facility. We do. Yeah. And where do the scientists come from? <laughs> Literally all over. Um, recently, um, two of our top vets attended a conference in Florida and had a chance to talk about the center. And as a result, we're getting inundated with requests for internships and fellowships from literally across the country, uh, South America, uh, South uh, Southwest Asia, um, and Africa. Some requests have come in to. How do you choose who can do it? You only have so much space. Well, well, we can we can be picky, but we want people to have a serious interest in in marine biology and marine mammal science. And we look at those credentials, and you know, we judge them as, as I suppose any institution would. How can people reach out to you? Well, we do have a pretty uh, active, uh, robust website, so they can get a lot of information there about what we do. And I mentioned the educational programs; they can get a, a better idea of all those educational programs, or just you know, simply call us. You know. What's the website? Um, well, you can just look up the you know, Pacific Marine Mammal Center, or it's PacificMMC.org. Thank you, Pacific Marine Mammals Center Chief Executive Officer Glenn Gray for being on Impact OC. And I thank everyone for tuning in. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber. Have an impactful day. You've been listening to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping our community. Right here on Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio.